that you that unique property so this is an interesting property because we have a story about how we had like literally a line out the door of one of our open houses from this but again it's just there's a lot of different ways you can create an ad on facebook to drive traffic to this this is the way curator does it there's a lot of people today that are like debating whether or not you want to have opt-ins but that's stuff we can get to later um, and then again just another sample ad that they run like you could run a, a curated or like a collated group of uh, in your area of all the weekend open houses again just to drive traffic so it's just another example of an ad so you want to just push them yeah so this, this is how it works this is the process so they enter their number you can opt out of this too um, and they can still end up on the landing page but this is kind of a way that we get their phone number and again this is through the curator Facebook platform and then it ends up literally on the blog so now we've captured their information it's gone right into um, the, the CRM follow-up boss. And again, this is just samples of different open houses in uh, Los Angeles for that weekend that we ran the ad. So can you go into a few details on how you actually set up the targeting of those ads? Like, so when you're, you know, creating a, let's use the open house one for an example, like who would you put into the targeting in Facebook? Do you have some, you know, sort of rules that you guys use for how you set up those ads and and sort of who you would try to promote this open house to yeah so um that's a great question so we you know i i do use a marketer um through the curator platform we're on the marketing program so i actually pay um one of their in-house custom audience person people to do it but i've done it myself i mean essentially we're gonna go and we're a very very tight um dma here in southern california there's a lot of competition on facebook so we go out 10 miles and then we target, you know, base. We scroll down by demographic. Um, it's very granular, but we we target uh, people in market to purchase, um, certain income level. Um, you know, if they're a buyer or um, what? The, well, I'm trying to think. There's there's about six there's six or seven criteria that we target specifically. Um, I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you what them that they are right now. But for anybody who's listening to this, I'd be happy to share it with you. I can email it to you, or I, if we can even talk offline, maybe in the Q and A. Yeah, well, we'll put together, a, you know, a post after with the, the replay and everything. So, um, you know, we can add some details to that as well if uh, once you're able to dig that up. Um, For sure. The other thing, too, on the ads, uh, we chatted about this. This is always a big question. You kind of alluded to it, too, about the opt-in side of things. So when you're promoting the listing, um, so I think if you just back up a slide there, Carrie, um, the, looking at the actual listing promotion, so there's always this back and forth about whether or not you should share price. So right. what's the mindset behind that? Why would you withhold pricing on, on the ad that you're promoting? He's going to, he's going to answer that with Dave. I had the same question. <laughs> I thought it was retarded, but they didn't have the price on there. So, so, so the reality is, is that if you, you know, again, I'm not speaking with my curator hat on, I'm speaking with just the market, my marketer hat on. The reality is, is that to increase engagement, um, they're going to say you don't want to give out the price because you want them to find the price by clicking through further. Um, but then you do definitely have a debate, you know, that you're going to also then increase the engagement with looky loos and tire kickers because why would they click through if they knew what the price, especially if they couldn't qualify for the price? Does that make sense? So there, there's definitely a debate on both sides of the question. I actually just came from a big marketing seminar last week, and the guy that was giving the seminar was literally saying the curator is doing it all wrong. And here's why. So I think it's debatable um, whether or not um, putting on the price, putting price out there, displaying it first before setting up on the landing page is, you know, the primary option. There's no question that, you know, Curator has data and analytics to show that they increase, they increase uh, engagement by having the price on the landing page. But again, does that really work for a realtor? I mean, it's debatable. I mean, Monica wants me to put the price on there, but our, but our marketer, you know, the marketing team actually at Curator now is not allowed to do that. So if you do that, you have to design your own ad and do it. So again, it's an interesting question, Dave. I think there's a, it's a really healthy debate. Yeah. And I guess at the end of the day, it means that it's something that each person's market and audience and probably right down to each individual home is unique, right? So it's probably something that warrants a little bit of testing and, and uh, you know, you can kind of try both versions and see, you know, what ends up working best for you, right? Because the, and, sorry, go ahead, Monica. No, I was just going to say just um, real quick that 
I, I don't think, and if people are listening to this, you don't have to use Curator to do these kind of sites just so no, that they know that. Themselves. We're going to get to yeah, a slide. You can definitely do it yourself. So I, the people that are listening, don't get turned off and say, we're just attempting to pitch Curator. This is just who we use that does that for us. But you can definitely do it yourself. Well, I, let me actually, that brings up a good point. Let me just say to everybody who's listening to this. So um, as Dave said, you know, my background is in digital marketing and not just uh, uh, real estate, but the automotive sector. And so I'm very high level. I've been doing custom audience targeting on Facebook for like five years now, like literally before most people even knew what custom audience targeting was. And I, I personally believe it's very difficult um, to target and to do uh, to, to be very effective and, and to make it work. It's a, this is a long game. Um, when you're going to market on Facebook, you have to understand that it's going to take 12 to 18 months to truly see a return on your investment. Now, a lot of people think, well, that's crazy, especially if you're paying a company or, you know, like Curator and you're, you're on their marketing platform and you're paying them $2,500, $2,600 a month, not including your Facebook spend, which can, you know, be anywhere from, if you're effective, $500 to $1,000 a month. So to wait, you know, have to, con you know, commit thirty dollars to $35,000 over the course of 12 to 18 months, you know, to see... Um, a return is 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 hard for most people to stomach. Um, so you know, you know, you know, if you're if you are going to be on this game, you know, by marketing on Facebook, because trust me, it definitely increases leads, it definitely increases names, it definitely pushes a ton of people into your CRM. That if you're marketing to, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this presentation, um, will definitely lead to more business for you in the long run. But it's definitely a long game, and that's what you really have to understand about Facebook. So on this slide, real quick, guys, these are just some more places. Um, that you can utilize as resources um, to, to do Facebook targeting. It's much cheaper to use a lot of these folks than it is, say, Curator. Um, and, you know, I'll just say specifically, you know, I have had very poor um, success slash results using my own um, Facebook uh, custom target argument doing myself. So the reason that we chose Curator and their marketing platform and not just their basic platform, because you can use, use both, is because I really wanted to hire an actual quote unquote, expert custom audience targeting person, which is exactly what Curator markets their marketers as. Um, and after six months, you know, the, it, he's, it, he does a pretty good job, but like if you put, you know, if you put a gun to Monica's head right now and asked her, well, how great is their conversion? You know, we would say, well, we're starting to see it. Like we actually have two deals that we've sourced to it now and we're seeing a lot more people in our funnel. But like I said, it's just, you're not going to see immediate conversion like you would if you were advertising somewhere, you know, that would send in more leads to you. I won't get into those people, but they, you're just, it's a long game, put it that way. Next slide, Carrie. <clears throat> okay, I get to speak on this one. <laughs> so holding a successful open house. So first of all, what, I, what I've known over the years is, you guys, your attitude around an open house is huge. If you're gonna take on the attitude that it's an inconvenience, why do you have to do it, blah, 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 and you're just complaining and moaning and groaning, good luck, because you're gonna take that with you to the open house as well. So number one is you wanna make sure that your mindset is, is ready for it, that you're excited for it. So I always believe that anything you do starts the night before. I mean, mentally prepare for it. I've even had, I've even done like little visualization techniques to where I see myself having a great open house, I see myself enjoying it, it's not about it being an inconvenience. This is just part of the process. This is part of what you're doing for your business and for your client as well. So when you do that the night before, when you wake up, you're excited. You're ready. You're ready to have this open house. I even get excited about putting up the signs because I'm like, wow, I get to get out, put on my gym clothes. I'm going to get out. I like to get up early in the morning and put them out like 6 a.m. and then put signs all around the neighborhood and not put it right in front of the home, or if I do put it in front of the home, then I put a note on the door to come back at whatever time the open house starts. Because honestly, you guys, if you put them out early, if people are out and about doing their thing, they know that an open house is later, and they can mentally note, okay, there's an open house, such and such, at this time. Great. But not everybody's going to be out running around if you put them out a half an hour before the open house. They're, you're going to miss a lot of people. Right. I honestly know that open house traffic does improve with the open house signs. So those of you that think that you don't have to put a lot of open house signs out because you're advertising it online, you're going to miss out on people. It's yeah. just it's just the way it is. Okay, yeah. So a couple of things. I, I have a question. What? Um, how many open house signs would you put out for one of your typical open houses? Is there a particular number that's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's the secret sauce or do you, do you have a number that you shoot for for every one of them? 
not a number. I, I like to put out 30 or more depending on the property. Because remember, the way I was taught too with some of this is if you have a property that's easily accessible for people driving, then of course you're not going to need as many signs. But let's say you're in a windy area, it's a hilly area, you have to put a lot of directional signs to get you to that property. Then of course you're going to have even more signs out. I think what happens like in real estate, like people forget that they have common sense. Like use common sense. If you need more signs because you're going to be able to attract more people, great. And you know, honestly, sometimes you have to be creative too. I've had open houses right near a church. And honestly, open houses by churches are freaking awesome. You have it when they have this, the services. So if you have masses or, or services going on at 8 a.m., you start your open house at 7.30 a.m. and you finish whenever all the services stop. And I, I'm not kidding you, I've had some insane amounts of traffic during those times. And then sometimes too, during the week, if you can have them during the week and the schools are getting out. Have them when the, the parents are driving around picking up the kids. And sometimes they want to kill some time and they'll go to your open house and hey, they have a friend. I mean, honestly, you never know who your next contact is going to be or who your next deal is going to be. So always be ready for it to happen and be creative on how you're going to do it. Yeah, so so we're kind of skipping around here a little bit, but that's fine. Um, Carrie, can you go back real quick on the open house checklist? One slide. So guys, we actually made... Um, Actually, the next one after that one. So, so you can stay there, Carrie. That's fine. But either one. So, we actually created an open house checklist checklist template for you. Um, it's on here. We'll like, again, we'll be able to send this to you. But it's right there. It's ateamlending.com. It's one of our in house lenders, and it has a really awesome open house checklist. I mean, we can kind of go through it with you for a second here, just real quick. But I mean, it's, there, you can see here, there's literally like 30 steps. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff in here. It's very you know, I'm not going to go through step by step here for this webinar and this presentation. Because we there's, bore you. But there's a lot of great stuff in here. Okay, so just a couple of things, very high level. And if you guys have questions about this, I, I would do this. One thing that you have to do, and a lot of people screw this up, is if you're going to have an open house on a Saturday and a Sunday, you must must enter into the MLS no later than three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. Okay, because the major endemic sites, the Zillow's, the Trulia's. The realtor.coms, that Redfin's, all these all these sites, their algorithm is not in real time like um, our MLSs. So regardless of where you are in the country or even in Canada, hi, hi to all you Canucks. Um, the the truth is is that Zillow is so slow to update. Uh, we've seen tons of people make this mistake, ourselves included, where you've entered a listing in on a, like a Wednesday or a Thursday, and it's not on Zillow by Saturday morning. So you've completely shot yourself in the foot. They have all the unique visitors. They have all the eyeballs. Okay, yes, the MLS is great. Yes, we all use the MLS. But if you're not positioning yourself on all the search engines before that Saturday or Sunday open house, you've screwed yourself. So that's number one. You have to do that. Okay, I think I got a couple other things, a couple other notes here. Um, door knocking. You want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? Door knocking before the open house is awesome. You get to meet the neighbors. It's really exciting to tell them about the open house. It starts communication with them. They can tell friends that want to move into the neighborhood. So I believe, and I know because I've had this happen, it's one of the best ways to get people into your open house as well. So you want to door knock, you know, Jay, Jay says the day before, I like to do it at least two or three days before the open house. And then that way, you know, you could hit as many people as possible. Um, the, but one thing too that you want to make sure is, I know that there's certain cities and certain municipalities that actually want you to have a license if you're going to be door knocking. So just make sure that you know the city's guidelines when it comes to either door knocking and open house signs, because there are some cities that limit when and how you can put out open house signs. So, you know, obviously, again, common sense, know what you're doing and know the city that you work in as well. Um, so if you are door knocking, if you do it in a license, make sure that you carry that with you. And then just know your scripts. And then, so the other thing, well, we'll get to that. We'll get the scripts in a second. But um, the other thing is get to the open house early, right? Like you Oh, all... Lord. Yeah, you guys, stop showing up to the open house all flustered. And especially if you have clients, oh, my God, oh, you're just putting out open house signs and I'm, I just got here. And you're all sweaty and gross. Get there early. Get there early. Turn on all the lights. Be excited about the, uh, about the, again, be excited about the open house. And be excited that you're at this property, that you have the privilege to work with these people to sell this property. It, this is not about an inconvenience. This is you being there, being ready, being ready for those prospects coming in, either selling the home or finding other people that you're going to help, one or the other. It, this, there's no, I don't believe there's any waste of time if you do it productively. 
So Carrie, if you can, if, if there's any questions, uh, we can ask real quick. But Carrie, if you can slide to the um, the slide, the line out the door slide, I think slide 12. Okay, so real quick, guys, um, we're going to get into like, you know, what you do at an open house, what you know, what we do at an open house. But just a real quick question is, or, or a story as an aside. So we recently had a house, um, at Del Cerro here. Oh, is that one that you just? Yeah, saw? yeah. We actually the one that we just showed you. So we actually had a line on both days. Um, at that open house, like literally 30 people deep. And I think the reason, I mean, first off, the house was priced uh, below market. And uh, this, this presentation isn't a, a presentation on pricing, um, right. although Monica and I are really good at doing that. But the reality is, is that you, if you do everything that we're talking about here, if you create a nice Facebook ad, if you target it correctly, um, and if you price your home well, this is the kind of stuff that you can have happen where you have literally 20 to 30 people waiting outside your house to show. Now, again, um, this is a uh, this is an every time thing for me and Monica, but you know this summer um, we've actually had this happen more than once or twice. But it's very awesome when you show up as someone you know, if you're one of your team members or even yourself or whatever, holding open house with twenty five or thirty people waiting in the door. And this is also another example of why you have to be punctual. You should get there way in advance. You should prepare for this kind of stuff happening. Um, but anyway, does anyone have any questions about that type of promotion? I don't know. Dave, are you still there? Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm not seeing any questions on that specifically, but I mean that it's it. So now I think what's exciting is we've gone through. So this is like the sort of preamble, right? And and I feel like the successful open house, eighty percent of the success of it lives in the preparation, right? right? Getting the property onto the MLS well in advance, then making sure you do some ads to uh to get the word out then the door knocking component the signs just building that awareness building that hype that background that leads you into the fact that now you're going to have people lined up out the door when that open house is ready to start because you've now you know you've done the hard work right in advance it's all you know now it's uh it's about the execution right and so that's uh i think that's pretty cool that makes a lot of sense and and uh um yeah, excited for you guys to dive into the next piece, which is yeah. how to actually run those to make sure you're capturing these folks that show up. So all all that hard work, you're able to get the most possible turnover from it. Exactly. And I'm sorry, I closed the um, chat window because I have like three things I'm open and looking at. So I, I apologize. So if there's somebody, if somebody does ask a question, Dave, just ping me and uh, or just, you know, just drop it, whatever we'll get in. But on, so, so guys, so great seed, great seed. Um, so staffing your open house. So this is where 98% of real estate agents go wrong. Okay. They don't have a lender at their open house. Okay. Hey, guys, I'm telling you, Monica will tell you, you have to have a lender at your open house. Now, depending on, you know, where you're at, what the size of your city, you know, the market that you're in, obviously economics of that current situation or that current dynamic market dynamic. Um, when you're overwhelmed like that, you know, listing that we just showed you guys where we had 35 people, you know, waiting outside the door. And that was both days, Saturday and Sunday. If you do not have someone with you, you are toast. There is no possible way that you are going to be able to handle all of the people that are coming in with the questions and just, you know, turning people, you know, having to be able to communicate effectively. It's just going to be impossible. So we always recommend that you have some sort of a relationship, again, depending on the size of you as an individual or a team. Um, with a lender and that you prearranged before your open house to have the lender sit with you. Right. And make sure they're on time. Yeah. I mean, when, when you have the right lender, I mean, obviously we're showing a picture of one of ours, but like a, a good lender is also going to bring water. They're going to bring food, hors d'oeuvres, snacks, cookies, stuff like that. You know, keep things to keep people engaged when they come in. And then, you know, ultimately when you have a conversation where you have a really hot, you know, listing, you're going to have these people want to talk to the lender anyway. You, you know, I mean, obviously, we're in Southern California and it's almost impossible to even talk to somebody without being pre-approved to purchase a house. But in markets where it's not, um, and there's plenty that are out there still like that, you want them to be able to talk to a lender, to, you know, to feel at ease and to feel good about possibly wanting to get that house and getting the pre-approval process and set up. So again, totally crucial. 
to have a lender with you. You know, we mentioned in here that it's also great when you can have two agents and we do that a lot with our open houses, depending on, you know, our, how many open houses we're having that weekend. I mean, obviously if you're a really busy uh, team or shop and you've got, you know, 10 listings or eight listings or six listings and you need literally like every person on your team, one person's going to be there, then you should just have one lender, or one person. But on some of these, some of these open houses where you have so many people and honestly, both of these that we're talking about on Del Cerro, we had over 500 people come through both days. So if you don't have two agents and a possible lender there, it's really difficult to get everybody's questions answered. Right. And I think even for the safety of the, of the homeowner, if it's a large home, you want to make sure that you, and it's two levels, you want to have someone up on top and someone down at the bottom, you know, for them to, to feel safe that their house is properly covered. Because, you know, I think as owner, I would have a concern that somebody's coming through my home and looking through things and possibly stealing things. So you want to make sure that you put them at ease as well. Yeah. So next slide, Kerry. Um, well, there's a couple of questions that have popped up, and I, like I personally have one too. I'm I'm really curious to know. Like, I know you guys have an amazing relationship with your lender, just based on you know the fact of how much that they've put into have helping you guys put this webinar together. But I mean, why why the lender over having another agent? at the open house what's the like i understand so you mentioned they they pre-approve on site um is that Great really question. the big thing is that, that to get more buyers so, rolling like what's there, the it, mindset a lot behind of, having a, lot a lender of instead of another question. agent one is okay, okay. i've had it where i've had somebody walking off the street who is who has an idea that they want to buy they have no clue they have no idea and the lender there actually can help them go through the process they can even pre-qualify them there. They can say, hey, what do you, you know, ask them the, the questions. Of course, they're not going to be walking around with their tax information or their tax papers. But you get an idea right then and there because many times you'll have buyers that will come in and ask you loan questions and you're not the lender. So you're not going to be able to give them accurate information when you're not doing the loan. But if you have somebody there who's able to help them, it's, it's such great communication and it helps them see too, like, look, hey, we don't just help you buy the house, but we can make sure that you have any, if you have any questions with respect to borrowing, that we have a lender here to answer your questions. And also too, what it does as well is like, if you do have somebody that says that they're already pre-qualified and they go through some of the, the questions the lender does, you actually know if these people have actually been more vetted than what they're telling you, because we've had it where there's been issues, people have bankruptcies or other things that the lender didn't even realize they had, and yet when we have a, have them cross qualified, we find out. Wait a second, there are underlying issues that they didn't even realize were going on. So then we realize they're not even as qualified as they they told us. So it's it's just a more professional way of doing things. You don't sometimes two agents. You know, one is you don't need two agents telling you about the property unless, of course, the house is big. And then two, like if they do have questions about loans, you're not going to be able to answer them. So it's better to have a lender there who's a professional who can give them different options when it comes to, to loans. And, and they can also intelligently discuss what's going on with perhaps work history, other things. I've had people like, oh, I just started my job a year ago and I want to, I want to buy a house. And you're like, well, you really need to talk to a lender. So Dave, to add to that, to just to add, to add on to that, because that's a great question, by the way. Um, it also leads to the idea that when we have a lender come, guess what? They're also going to be fully vetted and fully educated about this open house. They're going to know everything about the house. They're going to be three or four days before the open house has. They're going to have a property information sheet. They're going to have access to it in the MLS. They're going to be doing their homework. They're going to pre, you know, produce their own collateral material and creative um, on the property so that they have flyers. In fact, I should have brought that up, but most of our lenders, when they sit, they're going to be responsible for bringing all the collateral sheets you know, to hand out from a flyer standpoint on the property. You know, sometimes they do three page perspectives, sometimes they'll do gloss. So um, it's a great question. And that's, a, you know, another reason why we want to have a lender there because they're going to actually be able to provide more, more information and data. Yeah. And I think, uh, and, and that makes complete sense to me. And I, and I think the other thing that's really interesting too, is it also gives like, it gives the impression, which I mean, quite frankly, is the reality in this situation that you're providing a full service offering, right? A lot of times too, like, I mean, I've been to my share of open houses in my own neighborhood, right? And I might not have been in the market and quite frankly, might not know anything about buying a home and walking through the doors there, being able to see that someone's providing not just the actual, like helping me buy and sell, but giving me the full package creates a huge, you know, very good impression, right? If I'm a new home buyer or, you know, just starting to 
to to do my homework right and uh so yeah i think just the the impression that it puts off the positioning of you guys as a full service team is is uh is pretty interesting let me just add one other thing to it too dave like many times what you'll have is you have somebody who says oh you know i bank at wells fargo and i just went and i spoke to them and they said that i can qualify for seven hundred thousand. yeah you know so i'm good i'm i'm golden and we've had i'm not kidding you we've had so many transactions where a situation like that has occurred and Wells Fargo didn't even do their homework to make sure no. that this person was actually qualified. And in the underwriting process, it falls out. And you're like, are you kidding me? Right. So there's a lot of education that goes around purchasing a home, not even just in, in us dealing it with selling it. But in, I mean, the loan is a huge part of it. And they need, they need to have education around that because this is money that they're going to be paying for the home every single month for 50 years. <laughs> There's no 30 years in just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. No, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Definitely clarifies for me. And maybe I'm the newbie here, but uh, yeah, no, that 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 um, that was really helpful. Um, so we've got two questions about the open house side of things. So one yeah. question is, is one day better or like do you guys always run both Saturday and Sunday to, to catch as many potential buyers as possible? So that's literally an ama- a great, great question. Um, it totally depends on the house. And like, the market. Well, totally. I mean, yeah, the, the good point, Monica. I mean, I, I'm kind of in my head right now relating it to the current Southern California market, which it's a, it's literally like a, a circus. There's very limited inventory here, um, you know, depending on the area, the specificity of the house and, you know, its condition, that's, which is where it was going to go into. So I, I would say that if it's a house that needs a lot of work, it's a technically like a fixer or a flip or something like that. I would have a very strategic one day specific time and place market the living hell out of that, you know, at the beginning of the week through Facebook, however else you market and just let people know that, you know, this is just a limited time window where you can come in and see it and make your bid. Um, But for a normal house, for the most part, you know, a nice house, a house that's maybe been refurbished or just a really, you know, ultra luxury house, you know, a million dollar plus listing or something like that, depending on the buy-in you have with the sellers. And obviously, um, again, this isn't really a conversation of, of selling and, and how you present and stuff like that. Um, although Monica and I are working on one of those right now too. Um, you you want to get buy-in from them to do it for a couple of days. Because a lot of people, especially with nicer homes, you know, don't like the idea of people trampling through their house. Okay. So depending on the buy-in you get from the actual sellers and, and, and their likelihood or want to allow people to walk through the house, you're going to do two days and you're going to, again, again, obviously as Mark, Mark says, it depends on the market because if the market's not hot, it doesn't matter anyway because you're not going to have huge turnout on two days. But if you do have huge turnout um, and you have a hot market like we have in Southern California right now, the likelihood that you're going to get enough people in through those two days combined with the visibility of the marketing that you've done in the previous week is a strong likelihood you're going to get offers you know, I, in I, the next week. I wanted to add something to that. Sorry to mean to you. So remember too, it depends on your market. So we have some areas here in SoCal where they literally, Saturday and Sunday, it's like open house extravaganza. <clears throat> and you, if you're not holding your property open, then you're not doing you know, what you need to do for your clients type of deal. So you got to know your market. Plus, again, if you're close, like let's say like during the week could actually be good traffic because let's say maybe there's, um, and sometimes even you guys, sometimes even twilight open houses, you know, work really well if you have a great view property and you can see the sunsets. And so I'm saying when you, when you're creative and you know your market and you know what the typical patterns are either of schools, of churches, and you know when's the best time to have then do it. Do it then, of course, you have to make sure that it's not going to affect like they don't have certain laws or rules or regulations on having them at different times or during the week for signs. But I've, I've had open houses during the week, during times when kids are getting picked up from school and they've been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And I've had, I've had open houses around churches, you know, and that they're having their services. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And again, we've had them twilight open houses. Phenomenal. Right. So know your market, know your property. If it's if something you you want to sell, because whether it's the view or what, when is the best? When is the best view? And when would be a great time for people to come and take a look at the property? So I think that's all market derived. I love that. I love the. It's almost like a guerrilla marketing approach to leverage 
other things that are going on in the neighborhood at that same time or in and around that same time to make it easy for those people that might just, you know, for that foot traffic to come in and have a look, right? Um, it's using your environment to your advantage, right? I, I, I love that. That's a, a concept I've never heard anybody really talk that much about before. So that's that's very cool. I'm going to use that. Use environments. <laughs> I like that. So is there another question? Dave? Was there another question? Um, yeah. So there's, well, there's a, a quick follow up on that one. Is there a particular day of the weekend or day of the week that you find to be more effective? And I think I know what your answer is going to be, but I'll let you guys take it. Well, I mean, traditionally, and again, market derived, but traditionally in Southern California, weekends are going to get better play because most people are wage slaves and they work Monday <laughs> through Friday. <laughs> Sorry, that's my term. I was a wage slave for 40 years of my life. So b- believe me, I, 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 I've been on both sides of the equation, but most people are literally working obviously Monday through Friday. Although in Southern California, I don't know if anyone works, <laughs> but, but the reality is, is that from like eight to five, you're going to have most people in work. So if you are going to have a, a day, um, a midweek um, open house, Monica is hitting the nail right on the head. You schedule it, you market it correctly. It would be twilight. So you're going to have it sometime probably between four and six, um, you know, because then a lot of times what will happen is agents will bring their clients. Now I would never have a twilight open house unless you have a luxury listing or you have, as Monica said, a home with a view, which usually t- they, they tend to be one of the same thing. And then also too, one thing to recognize as well, so many times we get caught up in, as agents, we get caught up in, well, traditionally, this is what you have, you have a three hour, one to four open house. Come on, you guys. You can have a one hour open house. You can have a two hour open house. You can have a five hour open house. Know your market, know what's going to be best for you to s- sit there at this, at this property instead of just saying, well, traditionally we have a one to four open house. Really? Is that what's best for your client and for you to sell this property or even be able to access more people? So be creative. You don't have to get stuck in the norm. You can think out of the box and do something a little different because if you do something a little different too and it, and it gets you some great results, your clients are going to be like, dang, I want to I want to refer you to a lot of people. This is awesome. I never knew any agents did any of this kind of stuff. They're like, yeah, that's right. I'm pretty good like that, aren't I? <laughs> it's Bye. awesome. And, and, and I mean, with the, the length of time too, it actually brings up a pretty uh, funny story. I remember, uh, I think I chatted with you guys about this a little bit. A friend of mine, used to not actually set any start and finish times or he set a start time, but not an end time on his open houses. And what he did was uh, made sure that he had access to other properties that were on the market that were kind of in the same price range. And if he ever needed to, if he ever got these really hot buyers walk through the door, he'd actually, and I mean, you guys wouldn't have to do that with your strategy because you've got multiple people. He would run out and show those people other homes in the area that matched that home. And the amount of times he turned those into immediate transactions was just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, this guy was a, an absolute beast when it came to this stuff. But um, Dave, That's totally brilliant. Dave, that's awesome that you say that because that's another part of the puzzle too is know your inventory. Because you'll have people come in and be like, oh, well, this doesn't fit. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, you know what? There's actually a property over on Market Street that's right. awesome. And it's got blah, 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 blah. I, honestly, let's go see it. You know, you can literally go take them there if you wanted to, or you can let them know about it. But if you know your inventory, then you're not going to be guessing and and wondering what's what else is on the market. You can actually let them know. But Dave, to your point, though, too, like another reason why you want to have multiple people at your open house because if you do get an opportunity like that, you can't just shut the open house down and go take them, you know, to the place. But if you have another agent with you. Um, or even a lender, you could say, "Hey, look, I mean, you know, I need thirty minutes. I'll be right back." But yeah, all all great ideas for sure. We we had we had one client that actually had um, they had a security system that they were videoing. So let's say you did do that, <laughs> and your clients didn't tell you that they had a security system there, and they're recording, and you bailed, and you're like, "Oh, I was gone for like an hour." Text, and then they, no, 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 they text you like literally twenty minutes. Uh, Where why are, are you? you? Not at the open house anymore. And you're like, "What are you talking about?" We actually had that happen, and our agents were there, and I'm like, "Hey, guys." Just so you know, you're being recorded. Watch what you say. <laughs> yeah, that, thing, that, that definitely does happen. Um, but anyway, for the, for trying to get through this and, and, and not being too late, is there any more questions or can we jump into this next slide? No, let's dive into the next uh, the next section here. Um, I think that's a nice tie-in actually to go into the actual, because I mean, now if we're talking about you know some of the strategies inside, but we're coming almost back to like, you've got the lineup outside, right? Um, you're, you're there early, but if you get there, you see people already lined up. 
Um, one question that did come in is, what do you guys do? Do you let them in right away or do you uh, no. get them to wait so you can get no, everything so, set up? So, so just, so just real up. quick on this slide, and because I don't want to miss this because this is strategic, very crucial. So, so um, another reason why to have two agents there, and honestly, Monica and I will go to open houses every now and then. I mean, I go more than, than Monica does because I'm there kind of in a training capacity to, to listen to my agents talk. But guys, having an open house is the greatest. If you're you know, a listing agent and you have buyer's agents on your team, that's the greatest scripting conversational opportunity of all time. You're never going to get better conversations. You can listen to your agents talk to potential buyers. You can listen to them have conversations with the lenders you know, in combination. I mean, there's so many different... Um, opportunities at an open house to have a you know to have great communication and this is truly when your agents are going to learn how to talk to people okay now it, they can practice scripts all day long but this is real like you said Dave combat in the in the trenches guerrilla warfare tactics and when you're talking to people cold off the street that you have no relationship with this is how you're gonna learn how to talk to people yeah that's fantastic I mean I think that's a huge um, you know, a huge nugget for, for a lot of people on here, you know, with small teams, um, and you're looking to build those teams, you're looking to train those buyers agents who may be relatively new to the business. Um, you can sit over their shoulder and listen to phone calls and stuff like that. But this, this in-person, you know, face-to-face -face experience that you can coach them on yet. Yeah, I, I can't imagine there's any other opportunities to really do that outside of open houses. So, um, yeah, that seems like a huge opportunity. Yeah. Okay. So real quick, Carrie, scroll through. So real quick, this is just really serious. Um, Monica and I do not allow people into an open house who do not sign in. Okay. And how do you do that? You literally say the seller has asked that all visitors sign in. And if you're unwilling to comply, then you're not allowed to view the house. Now, you're going to get people who don't speak English or, you know, have other issues. Um, and they're going to like get all confrontational and testy with you. Um, you know, that's how, that's going to be up to you on how you handle that. But uh, again, for Monica and I, and this is going to seem perfect into when we talk about Spacio here in a second, it's all about finding real buyers and having real data to aggregate to our CRM and to our marketing efforts, you know, in the long term. And if someone is just a looky-loo tire kicker and is not serious and is unwilling to sign in, we literally send them to the curb. Okay. Right, but, but guys, too, like the, the way the way to think about it too is like I okay, so I'm a mom, and and I sometimes you know my mother hat comes on. I'm like, come on, like, would you seriously want a stranger coming into your home that you have no way to track? Right. And and that's honestly really. And and then if they're like, so I usually just say the seller requires registration. And if they say, well, no, I, I just want to look around. I'm sorry, the seller requires registration. We are not allowed to let you in unless you register and we know who you are. Would you want somebody, a stranger, walking through your home and you have no idea who they are? You have no idea how to track them? Seriously. And then if they say like, well, 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 and I say, I'm sorry, then you're not able to come in. We are required to get registration. Right. And so you don't have to be a dick about it and be like, no, you, you know, but you can be firm about it and be professional about right. it because if this were your home, you wouldn't want strangers coming through your home and not knowing who these people are because for all you know, they might be casing your, your home right. to, to rob. You have no idea. So safety first. I always tell people safety first. Your safety is our priority. Well, well done, Monica. Just to add one to that and then we get into the meat and, and potatoes of this. Um, it's, it's crucially important, guys, if you're going to be successful in real estate that you maintain some form of control over your transaction, over everything that you do. And if you're letting people, you know, wander through your house willy nilly, an open house, then how are you going to gain their, you know, A, their, their a relationship with them or respect? And then B, how are you going to like market to them? Which pushes us right into the next slide. Dun, 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 dun. So, guys, let me just go big picture here, real quick. Okay. So, this is the reality of the world that we live in today. If you are not capturing every single potential prospect that you work with data for remarketing later, then you are wasting your time. If you're still one of those agents or teams that has a clipboard, okay, and a sign-in sheet for your open house. Jay's making fun of me. Guys, seriously, that is absurd. Now, let's just make an analogy. Now, if we were doing that, okay, when we have 25 or 35 people out the door, 
how effective are you going to be when you start letting them in and then it just becomes a circus, a free-for-all? Nobody's going to sign in. Plus, you're going to make them stand in line. So anyway, the technology that is available to us today, which is the, obviously the Spacio application, is literally the most simple way to gather everybody who comes into your open house in a simple, easy-to-use sign-in screen. Now, here's the beauty of this. In Southern California, we have a huge Pacific, I'll be politically, politically correct, Pacific Rim um, client base. And so that's you know tons of folks from Asia. Um, this they convert this literally right into Chinese. So where you know where we are in the San Gabriel Valley of California, we have a ton of Chinese um, speaking buyers, and we can literally make this interface right here with Spacio for the sign in. So imagine this is a digital sign in. I don't want to go too far, but this is literally an application Spacio. We're going to give you guys an opportunity at the end of this to to sign up with them. Um, that will literally take their information right here, as you see on this sign in sheet, in literally like less than a minute. And, and, and you can de uh, determine which one of these screenings um, that you want to have. And we always do name, email, phone number. Um, are you pre approved? Um, and are you, are, you know, what, are you in market right now? It's like five or six things, but it's simple to sign all of this up. And then, boom, what ends up happening is all of their information, when the open house is over, it gets uploaded instantaneously and synced into Follow Up Boss. And okay? it helps too because you have a lot of liars that yeah. attempt to give you the wrong information and it's a good way if somebody's giving you a hard time because i've had times when somebody's giving me a hard time and they're not giving me the correct data and i'll actually dial their phone number in front of them to make sure that it's their correct phone number because they're just being a complete jerk and i'm not going to let them walk through my client's home unless i really know who they are and you know in that situation it's kind of being i think more i'm I'm being more rigid, but this this capacity with Spacio, it's awesome because you can actually link up to all their social media stuff, and you know that they are actually who they say they are. Yeah. So, so just just real quick, and I'm sure we're gonna get a ton of questions here in a second or or towards the end, but um, it's it's crucially important. Like another example of why you want to have two agents or a lender there. Um, and again, this is, this wouldn't be the open house that we're talking about where it's just nonstop, you know, like a turnstile, 500 people coming through. But when you're sitting in there and you're getting them, they're getting their information. If you have a laptop there, which I recommend, obviously you have an iPad and there's actually a stand that you can buy that I don't have a link to it here, but it's on Amazon. It's like 79 bucks and you literally, it's like a kiosk stand and you could literally put it right in the front door as people walk in and they can just have them sign in or push the iPad or whatever. I'm not, I don't want to get into that. But the reality is, is while you're in that open house um, and somebody comes up to you and you, you know, you build a, a strong relationship, they're like, Hey, I want to you know, work with you. I want to buy directly through you. So you're looking at a double end potential. Um, then you can even go into your CRM and leave a note, you know, once this is all synced. Now this is later in real time type stuff, not while you're in the open house. But again, I think the big, the big take home, big picture message here is, the old way of doing things, which is paper and a note board or a clipboard, is retarded, okay? This is literally going to take their information, assuming it's legit, and, and, and you know, I'm 90% of people that sign in are going to give you at least an email and a, and a full name. Um, and then upgrading that, or excuse me, automatically real-time syncing that to um, your CRM, you know, again, it's follow-up boss for us, but it could be for anybody, you know, depending on your CRM, is going to transfer their information for you, okay? So go to the next slide, Carrie. Wait, just real quick, you guys. So I'm the technologically retarded person, and I am the one who's always used paper and clipboards because that's just what I was taught, and that's what I know. I cannot tell you how many times I have lost people's information I have not been good about following up because whatever tracking, whatever it is, like I have, I've had paper scattered all over the place throughout my career. And it really sucks because it, when you're not organized and you don't have things together, it's really hard to follow up with people. So this just makes it a lot easier and a lot better. And for someone like me, who's technologically not very bright, it's easy. So it's not like you have to sit there and figure out a lot of stuff. So just because it's technology, you guys don't get turned off by it because all actually all this stuff makes it so much easier. And you look more like a professional because you have something that's so easy for them to sign in. And then when they link up to it, they're like, oh, whoa, you have all this stuff. Great. Okay, perfect. So you look even better as a professional. So, so this slide, you guys all know, you know, depending on what coach you've worked with or what, you know, real estate brokerage you work with and what kind of training they provided, we all know that 
the money is in the follow up, right? I mean, like, you know, you can look at these statistics here, but I mean, like half of salespeople never even follow up, right? And then you got half of that, those people be, go beyond making a second contact and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it says right here on the sheet, 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So Spacio is going to make it so seamless and so simplified because when you leave that open house that night, let's say you have 50 people sign in, you're literally going to hit sync before you close out of the Spacio app on your iPhone, excuse me, on your iPad or your, and I use a MacBook Pro when I'm doing it. I don't even use an iPad. I can't stand iPads. But the reality is, is like I just hit sync and boom, all the information just went in to our CRM, which is follow up loss. Okay. Now, if I have, say, five or 10 of those 50, um, as the agent that said, hey, I want you to call me or hey, I want you to follow up with me, then, you know, I go in and I leave a private note, you know, a personalized note in follow up boss, um, indicating that these people are, you know, need to be given more weight or value than the others. And then, Carrie, you can go to the next slide. Hey, and, and you guys, real quick, like follow up boss is pretty cool. I, I, uh, I used to use like Top Producer and some of those other, um, what are they called, CRMs? CRMs. CRMs. <laughs> um, I used to use those type of things. Oh my God. Like even that I was not great at, but follow up boss is awesome because it's so easy to get your information. It's so easy to access it. And it actually can like Jay even sends emails through follow up boss and we can tell when people have read the email. It's actually really cool. Technology. Um, no, but, 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 but no, honestly, uh, it's true. Monica's right. You know, we're not here to sing the praises of Spacio or follow up. Boss, but even, we are because even though they are cool stuff, even though they are part of this presentation, because we obviously personally choose to use them, but they really do simplify your life, guys. Like, I mean, there's a lot of great technology in the real estate space, but there's nothing that I've seen like both of these two companies that simplify it. You could be a complete idiot okay? like me. and download and download this, the, the uh, follow up boss app you know, on your iOS or your Android and literally just work your business through that. Okay. It's that simple and they get better and they make upgrades and they're doing a lot of really awesome stuff. But anyway, just to keep going on this. So once I sync my, um, Spacio to my follow-up boss, I obviously have everybody inside my follow-up boss that came from Spacio. So now I can literally, as Carrie was just showing the monies in the follow-up, you can go to the next slide, Carrie, I can create a filter where I can look at all the people, let's say it's that weekend, it's, let's say it's even you know, three days later, it's say Tuesday or Wednesday of my Sunday night open house, or if it was a Saturday night open house, it's Tuesday night. I can go into my follow-up boss and I can filter based on all the people that came into Spacio that haven't been contacted up. And obviously if I'm a listing agent or I'm a guy that's running the team, I can look at my, my salespeople and I can see the follow-up they've made. So it's just, Again, tech, when you utilize and you harness the power of technology, and again, this is not hard. I want for some of you guys out there that are like Monica, and by the way, I always say Monica put the no in technology. Um, the reality is, is that anyone can do this. Okay, any of you guys watching this, you can do this. This is very simple. Both Spacio and Follow Up Boss have a ton of training videos. They have a ton of stuff that you can watch in short amount of time during the course of your day. I know we're all busy, especially when we're working in our business. Um, where you can learn how to do all this stuff, but it's very, very simplified. And again, this is just going to make your experience, okay, in an open house that much seamless or that much more simplified and seamless. Because again, if you're Monica or you're any of the old school people and you're still using paper, okay, A, the likelihood that you're probably not going to transfer or transcribe all that information that you took down at those open houses or missed because you didn't have time because you're talking to somebody isn't going to go into your CRM and the likelihood of your follow-up being poor or, you know, average is high. Um, so with this technology, it just, it, 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 it eliminates, you know, the loss of data. And now you have the data in your CRM and now you got to be forcibly and consciously responsible to follow up, but it just makes it so much easier. And, and you know what? I don't know if any of you guys out there have had this problem, but I've had issues where, so I have like the, the paper register and they're, they're signing in. Then you have the person above them who really didn't fill in everything. And so the next person follows them and doesn't fill in everything correctly. And then you can't read their writing. And then so when you're later after you're all done and you're looking at everything, you're going, huh? And so it just, you can actually know the information. You can look at it. It's so easy to read. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm actually impressed. Yeah, so Carrie, next slide. And then uh, I think that's, that will end the uh, conversation, obviously, for, F, for, uh, for we can ask questions and stuff like that. But uh, so really on the last slide here. So we're going from guys, and we haven't really gotten too de detailed into this because it's kind of esoteric. If you have a CRM, you know, our, our, our hopefully you have, you know, drip campaigns, you have follow-up action plans set up in your CRM. You know, the one of the beauties of follow-up boss is that they have all this stuff. 
okay, set up or pre, pre already arranged or pre pre written. I mean, and then obviously you can go in based on your marketing, customize stuff. But once you're done with your follow up plans, you're very active, you go into the passive stuff, right? And now you're turning people on to drip campaigns, nurturing. I mean, all this stuff is through email automation. Another great thing that we provided you with this is, is that our lender has a link. It's 18lending.com forward slash open house drips. So here's what you can just cut and paste that. And there's 10 three, ma three email drip campaigns for open house buyers. Actually, we use a couple of them ourselves right now. Um, so it's, again, it's great stuff. You guys can put that into your CRM if you don't have a CRM, or you can even just use that to your Outlook if you're not using a CRM. But why would you not be using a CRM? Um, you know, if you're an entry level agent, maybe just starting up, maybe you don't have one, but that's fine. But anyway, all that data is available through our wonderful lender 18. Yes. Awesome. Well, that was, uh, that was fantastic guys. I mean, I personally learned a ton of, uh, of very cool stuff that I had never, never heard mention of before in all the events I've been to and all the conversations I have with folks. So I really appreciate you guys coming on and taking your time to, uh, to share all that you know, that depth with us because it's, um, yeah, I don't see this stuff a lot, like specifically open house strategies, how you're using them to convert leads. And I mean, um, so yeah, I think it's really exciting that we got to, uh, to share some of that stuff with everybody today. Um, one thing, uh, so I'm starting to get some feedback coming in for the webinar already. Um, one person was saying, I love Monica's energy. No wonder she kills it at open houses. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with experience, but I mean, it, it, it speaks to that, your preparation too, right? Like you, you talked about how you get up in the morning and you go out and you, you, you actually take pleasure out of doing something that most real estate agents don't like to do, which is put out the open house signs. And, and then with the checklist and everything being prepared and ready to go, you just have this confidence in what you're showing up to do. Um, so I, I think as much as it's probably natural for you at the same time, like you've got a strategy that allows you to manufacture that kind of attitude and that energy that you bring to these open houses. Right. Right. And I honestly, what I, what I've realized over the years is because I started off with the whole, Oh my God, I hate all this. Like you start realizing as you go through your, your career, that attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. If, if you're showing up to something and you're like, Oh, defeated, Who's going to want to talk to you anyway? It's a privilege to do what we do. We get to sell people properties. We get to, to deal with dreams and, and all these other things that most people don't. I don't have to sit behind a desk. I get to converse with people. It's awesome. So your attitude and who you are can be brought to it. And yes, preparation is key because I don't come and I'm not flustered. I'm just excited to be there. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about being alive. I love being alive and speaking to people it's it's awesome well one thing too dave just to add to that and if we have questions you know we're happy to answer them. i know we went over and stuff but we were late so i think we actually hit it in 60 minutes but um but one thing a lot of coaches uh teach very high level coaches teach um that a lot of people that are watching if they're still watching or paying attention will will, will notice will notice is that they say that open houses are a sucker's game because it's like a, a place for you know buyers agents to go and try to recruit um you know clients and you know we you'll hear that you know through and through but and i unfortunately when i first got into this game about six years ago hardcore on the side with monica and stuff like that i kind of tended to that mentality because i was like working with some very high level coaches and, and reading um, but the truth is is monica and monica convinced me over time um the truth is my is that, attitude convinced him <laughs> the truth the <laughs> truth is is that every potential person that you meet in an open house is a potential client okay because even if they're not even in the process of buying, they might be in the process of selling. And if they're not in the process of selling, they're going to be at some point knowing somebody who will be doing one of those two things. So if you build a good relationship with people, and obviously Monica, you guys are talking about energy being so amazing. Monica builds make relationships with people, you know, awesomely. And, you know, that's why I heard a little slogan is Monica makes it happen. I mean, but it's, if it just really, when you go to these things, it's your attitude is everything. As she said, you know, how positive you are, your mindset um, but go in with an open mind that like anyone who walks through the door is a potential prospect. I mean, a potential client. Don't think prospect, think client. Because everyone is going to sell and everyone is going to buy at some point. And if they're not, they're going to know friends that are going to be one of those. Plus, people. you guys, you never know who can connect you. I've met connections from open houses or from knocking around, speaking to the neighbors. They introduced me to somebody. 
I met my mentor doing that kind of stuff. I, I have an, a mentor who's 84 years old who's absolutely, you think I have great energy? This woman is runs circles around me. She's <laughs> phenomenal. So like you st you'd never know who you're going to run across or what connection you might make. So instead of asking myself, like, why do I have to do this? I'm like, this is awesome. Who am I going to meet? Who am I going to meet today that's going to connect me? Or who am I going to meet that's going to be just an amazing gift to me today? So the questions that I ask myself are not about defeating questions. They're questions that are going to build me and my career up. I mean, I mean, I mean, it just, just to add to that, too, it's the whole idea of putting out massive amounts of signs. I mean, all it takes is one person that wouldn't have known about your open house, wasn't even in market, could care less, but saw the sign and were like, oh, wow, you know, and it was naturally inquisitive and then just showed up and who knows what it can relate to or, or lead to. So it's so true. I mean, it really is about attitude. It's about mindset and it's about maximum visibility, both online and off. And having the right people and the right systems in place so you're not a doofus and don't follow up with these people. So don't be a doofus, follow up. Yeah, we have to we have to throw some props out to uh, Melissa, um, the uh, the founder and and uh, the lead lead person at Spacio. Um, you know, we we actually met I think about five months ago um, when I signed up for Spacio just through a recommendation of another person. And my sales director has a very funny story about that. But uh, you know, I emailed and said, hey, you know what, you guys got a couple of issues. I I think, I think you guys should look into doing this. And Melissa re replied back to my email. <laughs> And was like, oh yeah, sure, we'll do this. And I'm like, wait a minute, aren't you the founder of the company? And you know, so anyway, my sales director and I were like, we love that about them. But Spacio is again, great company. You guys should absolutely look into them right now. There's really no one that even that even competes with them. If you're doing open houses, you're in this business for a living. You've got to use that technology. I don't know anything better. And then of course, follow up boss. Um, is follow, I've used every single CRM, and I know Dan from literally like when he was in beta mode from back in like 2011 or whatever. I mean, they, they have the best CRM. They really do in the real estate space because it's the easiest to use. It doesn't have like every, you know, there's stuff out there. I know Ben Kinney's CRM is a little nicer from a standpoint of more technology, but it's not easier to use. And Ben Kinney's doesn't have a, 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 an app. So at the end of the day, right now, if I'm competing all the CRMs out there, follow-up loss is cost effective. They're not expensive. And they, they bolt on to pretty much every technology that's available. So you guys should definitely consider both. What does CRM stand for? Customer Relationship Management. Oh, oh. There you go. There you go. Well, I, like I'm over here blushing now, guys. I appreciate uh, those those kind words. I'd love to uh, just, we're going to look to wrap here in the next couple of minutes. If anybody has any remaining questions, uh, you know, fire them in now. Um, and then the other thing too, I always love to get some feedback on the webinar here as well for the people who, uh, you know, joined us and, and uh, were able to ride it out all the way through. I know a few people probably had to jump uh, just because we, uh, you know, the original three o'clock, um, you know, end time. But if you're uh, you're hanging out, can you give us some feedback and let us know how, uh, you know, what you thought and and if uh, if there's anything we could do to continue to improve what uh, you know the content that we're bringing you guys. Um, Randy says thank you. This was awesome. Uh, Lance says well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, this was awesome. Great. All right. Well, not too specific, but it seems like everybody uh, pretty happy. Great webinar. Love the energy. Um, so uh, is Spacio an app? Okay. So let me get you a link here. Um, folks, it sounds like a bunch of people are looking to potentially sign up for uh, Spacio. So let me, uh, so in the questions there, guys, I'm putting a link to where you can sign up for Spacio. It's not spacio.com. It's S-P-A-C dot I-O and then forward slash sign up is the sign up page. And there's a free trial available. Uh, so you can get in, get in, play around with it, get it hooked up to follow up boss and, and kind of see the whole thing in action if you guys want to check that out. Um, and, and, and Scott says, I would just say, Dave, real quick, that if there's anyone that watches this and has any questions, you guys can reach us. It's J A Y at Monica Diaz team.com or Monica at Monica Diaz team.com. And, and just, I wanted to say one thing real quick to everybody out there because I started solo um, in my real estate career and I started from nothingness. Like, absolutely. I mean, I was in the trenches, door knocking, calling, doing whatever it took to just get a deal. I just want you guys to know, like, you got to start somewhere. 
And if you start and you start developing yourself as a professional and you start working with the tools that can help you, I am not kidding you. Your life is so much easier. This doesn't have to be grunt work. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to sit there trying to make things better. There's so many things out there to make our lives easier. And yet we resist because we think, no, it can't be this easy. Uh, yeah, it can. And your life can be that much better. So be open to it. Awesome. Well, on that note, guys, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Uh, for those of you asking about a recording, uh, there were a few issues with getting the recording rolling, but I think I managed to get a a little bit of a hack in place to make sure that we got most of the uh, the webinar recorded here. So hopefully I'll be sending that out either later tonight or uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so a lot of people want to be able to share this stuff with their buyers agents and, you know, just great content to be able to share with some of your friends. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get something out to you guys as soon as possible with the uh, copy of the slide deck and, and also links to these resources that were shared um, in the session. Uh, we're also going to try and elaborate on some of the Facebook targeting for open houses. For sure. So, for sure. Um, you know, we'll try to put that into a, a blog post for you guys as well when we send that stuff out. Um, but outside of that, again, uh, I based on all the feedback that's pouring in here, guys, people are really, really uh, grateful for for everything that you, uh, you came on and shared today. So, um, yeah, I'm humbled by everything that you guys provided for us here today. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time. And um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, hopefully do another one again sometime in the future. Yeah, we would love to. And we're also humbled and privileged to be here. And again, I'll just say, you know, for any of you guys that are watching that you want to know more about Spacio, um, J-A-Y at MonicaDiazTeam.com. I'm happy to go in depth. I, you know, we tried to make this very basic here today. So there wasn't a lot of stuff. I apologize. I didn't have the criteria. Um, you know, for the granularity, for the uh, custom audience targeting, but I'll get I'll get that to you guys if you guys do the back one. And hey, Dave, thanks for follow up, boss dude. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm glad we were able to get something to build something that finally convinced you to use technology, Monica. That that is like. If there's anything we can be proud of, it I think that's probably one of our greatest accomplishments. Let's not go too far. I just looked at her emails and she has sixteen hundred and thirty emails in her inbox. Right now, so. <laughs> okay, hey, well we still hey, got some work hey, to do. Hey, though. hey! <laughs> this is all this is all just giving love. We're not talking about the negative stuff. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks again and uh yeah, um, if, like uh, like they said, they're open for questions, and uh, you know we're here for you on the follow up boss side as well. If there's anything you guys ever need, just let us know. Yeah, okay, guys, everybody have a great day. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. you guys.